Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do want to know you more. So let us surrender these next minutes to hear your word and to sit quietly and listen. Amen. Uh, the scripture today is from Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to the sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we, we may also share in his glory. Thanks be to God. So here's a little quiz for you. Who is in control of your life? Who sets the direction? in your life? Who leads you on your walk? Who led you here today? Why are you here today? What happened? You know, our natural instinct is to say, well, I am the captain of my own ship. We are taught, take control of your own life. You can do this. Take control of your life. Don't let other people tell you what to do. You're the master of your own situation. But what the Bible teaches us, what one ancient writer says, is that the Holy Spirit acts in our lives, in the lives of God's children, much like a captain of a ship or a charioteer over his horses leading them with the reins. I don't know if that's exactly how I would describe it. That sort of, you know, rubs us the wrong way, especially as Americans. It kind of rubs us the wrong way that somebody's trying to, you know, steer us. I don't think that's what the Holy Spirit's about. I think that's one of the reasons maybe the message of the church falls on such deaf ears today, is that people hear, well, the church just wants to control my life. They just want to ruin things for me. I'm having a pretty good time. So we think of God, the Spirit, as stealing, steering our ship into a dull, lifeless existence. But what if the Spirit is leading us, instead of a dull, lifeless existence, what if the Spirit is leading us to the place you see there, on that picture? What if the Spirit is leading you to a place where you say, now this is the life? Think about your life. Think about where you're being led. Is it a place like this as you go down your walk now? Or is that where you are? You know, as I talk to people each week, as I think about my own life each week, the fact is we want to control our lives, but the harder we try to control our lives, the more we come home at night looking for the closest room we can get into, lock the door, and scream, maybe silently. Which is why we invite you to come back here each week as often as you can. Because our goal is to have this be a place, as all of the spirit-led churches of the world are, places where we gather in community so that we can come 
to a place, not being driven with the whip of a charioteer, not being driven here by somebody else holding the wheel, but by the gentle leading, the soft whisper of the Spirit, come here. Now this is the light. Many of you tell me each week that being in worship is what actually gives you the energy to go through the days that you know, Monday through Friday, maybe Monday through Saturday, one of those days, you're going to feel like that, right? The point is that we invite you to come back here because we want you to see being in the presence of God is where you can say by the power of the Holy Spirit, this is the light. So what happens exactly when we're led by the Spirit? When we follow the Spirit, when we allow the Spirit to lead us, we are given not that, but that. We're given freedom. When we accept the gentle leading of the Spirit, we are set free from a life of slavery to the world's claims on us. What does the world tell us you should worry about? What is the world telling you tomorrow? Or when you read the newspaper, when you watch the morning news tomorrow, what's the world going to talk about? How to put your body in a different shape. What sort of things you have to buy even if you don't have the money to buy them? What the world is trying to do is make us in chains. To take more stuff than our checkbooks can allow. To tell us that the test of being a good parent is really just how good of a taxi driver are you. And what we hope will happen is that you will come here to be released at least once a week. And maybe it will carry over into Monday and maybe all the way through the week. Where instead of being a slave to our appetites, our physical and emotional appetites... Instead, we allow the Spirit to set us free, to break the chains. And so we stand. We stand free. Free of the chains that bind us. When we listen to that tiny little voice speaking, when we are soaked by the Spirit raining down on us, the chains melt and we are truly free. So have we then given up control of our lives? Yes, we have. And that's a good thing, because it means we're letting the Holy Spirit lead us, not by force, but by a gentle leading to our home, to our family, to become aware of the fact that we are children of God. Now, how did that happen? Well, the text tells us that we are adopted to sonship, and I have to tell you what that means, because it's a word that really applies to men and women. Adoption to sonship is simply something that comes out of Roman uh, times, and so Paul was writing his letter to the church in Rome, and so he could use this example, and they would know automatically what it means, but we don't. So here's what it means. Wealthy men, if they didn't have children, uh, sons who could carry on the name, they would adopt other men, and then those men that they adopt would take on the name of the person doing the adopting, and a couple of things would happen. Their entire, the person being adopted, all of his debts were forgiven. It's like a brand new start. The law would say, if you are adopted, no matter what you owe or who, to whom you owe it, it's forgiven, it's gone, it's done. You take on the name of the person adopting you, and not only that, you are legally and really his child, and you become the heir of everything the person adopting you has. So that's what Paul is saying. That's the spirit of adoption. Instead of being in a spirit of slavery where we're chained to everything the world says we have to be, we are given the freedom to be a child of God, where our debt, our sin is forgiven, where we take on the family name of Jesus Christ. That's why when we baptize children, we only say their first name because their last name is the family of God. And then we are set free to do God's work. Marissa and Angela, that's what their testimony is today. 
their testimony today and their stories that I was able to learn in meeting with them is that they were led, I believe, truly by the Spirit. You can't account for it in other ways. You know, here's how it used to be. It always used to be this way at Hope Church. You would, you know, go through, and then when you were a senior in high school, you would go through this confirmation class, you'd do the catechism, and then you would stand up here with everybody else, Dale and me and our whole, you know, we stand there and do that, right? Profess your faith, boom, done. Now, some of you will say, we should have it that way again. That, we're missing the good old days. When are those kids getting catechism, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'll tell you what. I like this way better, and here's why I like it better. Because if you could have sat in that room with me with Marissa, if you could have sat in that room with me with Angela, and you would have heard how the Spirit has grabbed them and brought them here. Nobody said they had to be here. They're here because of you. Because you love them and their children. Angela's children. <sighs> They're here because of grandpas and grandmas who faithfully prayed for them. We are children of God. Not only that, we are God's heirs. You know what a in a will, right, when you go to the will reading, it says, Johnny received the bicycle, Mary receives a diamond ring, and Johnny wants to know why Mary got the ring and he got the bike. Well, here's the thing about God's will. We all get the same thing. We all get the same thing Jesus Christ got. And what did Jesus Christ get? Yes, he had suffering. Yes, he suffered. Not because God wanted him to suffer, because the world makes God's children suffer, because we are at, not at peace with the world. And so we suffer in our walk through this world. But what else did Jesus Christ get? Jesus Christ received the resurrection life. And so, for Imogene, for Carol, for Joan, they are receiving today the glorification that comes through knowing Jesus Christ. They are heirs of that, that life and the glorification that awaits you. Now, what does it mean to be glorified with the Lord? Do you know what that means? It means that Jesus Christ, because he suffered, because he rose, because he reigns with Jesus Christ, with, with God the Father and the Spirit, it means he is ruling this world. And one day he will rule it perfectly and before him every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Joan and Carol and Imogene and all of you will reign with Jesus Christ forever. We are heirs, co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Now isn't that worth professing your faith in today? 